morning. Am I on? Yes, I'm on. Don't fall asleep down there, okay, girls? You look very comfortable. So I'm thrilled to be here today, and I'm going to talk about the power of self-belief. So you are the most magnificent being you will ever be is you. And if you're not going to take my word for it, then maybe take it from Dr. Seuss. Because today, you are you. It's truer than true. And there's no one alive that's more you -er than you. So if you were to open up your mind and believe in yourself a lot more, what would your world look like? If you believed you are magnificent, if you believed in your ability to overcome challenges and obstacles, if you believed in unlimited potential and possibility, and if you believed that you have the ability to shape and create your reality, what would your world look like? And are you willing to step into that aspect of yourself? Are you willing to give yourselves permission to be the best versions of you? That photo on the screen behind me is the moment I claimed my seventh world title. I had to step into believing to be the best version of myself. It's the moment I actually stepped into the history books. I became the most successful female surfer of all time. Permission to brag. I did something that not even the king of surfing, Kelly Slater, can do. I won six world titles in a row. And so I had to believe in myself. But it's our self-limiting beliefs that actually create the lives that we live. And if you want to understand what you believe, you just have to ask yourself what you want. And then the thought that follows that is actually what you tend to believe. Your yeah buts, your but ifs, are your beliefs. Winning my seventh world title taught me a lot about myself. It taught me a lot about getting out of my own way. It taught me a lot about believing in myself. It taught me a lot about trusting in my instincts and ability. And it taught me about trusting in ease and grace. Because, like you, I used to think that success required a whole lot of struggle and trouble and challenge. Oprah Winfrey once said, and all thought leaders say this, you don't manifest what you want, you manifest what you believe. Now, to give you a little bit of background about my life, I grew up on the northern beaches of Sydney. I actually grew up at a beach called Manly. Anyone familiar with Manly Beach? Yes, it's the most appropriately named beach in the world. <laughs> and I grew up as the only girl surfer down at Manly Beach. This photo is of me as a four-year-old surfing down at Mantown, I refer to it as. This is actually on the harbour side. I'm waiting for the ferries to come in to create boat wake for me to surf on. I started surfing as a four-year-old down at Manly. And it was a place that I felt truly connected to. The ocean is something that I still feel truly connected to. It's where I resort to every day to get a sense of balance, and a sense of freedom. And so when I started surfing as a four-year-old, it wasn't an environment that was very welcoming or uh, a place that was very encouraged for women to, to consider. And so I started to find a place where I felt comfortable by surrounding myself with people that believed in me, sometimes more than I believed in myself. I started surfing as a four-year-old right there in the corner at Manly. And then by the time I was six or seven, I was paddling out the back on my own, and I was dominating the lineup. But I realized that it was my beliefs that were holding me back. But it was also my beliefs that were actually propelling me forward. Let me give you an example of what I mean. When I was eight years old, my dad sat me down and told me I was adopted. And now, for anyone in this room that's ever experienced adoption on any level, from my own personal experience, when my dad told me I was adopted, it was that moment in time that I believed that I wasn't worthy of love. I believed I had been rejected by my own mother. I believed that I was worthless, loveless, and I believed I had been abandoned. That was the, I, that was the belief system that I had in my mind as an eight-year-old. And that gave me a choice. And that's what obstacles and challenges and setbacks do. They provide you with an opportunity to determine what's a really important course of action now. What is it that you want to do with this information? Because when you feel abandoned, when you feel rejected, you have a choice. You can become a victim of your circumstances, or you become a master of your destiny. The choice is yours. And it's the choices that you make that determine the realities of your life, or determine the quality of your life. So I made a choice as an eight-year-old that I'm going to become a world champion. Because I thought if I become a world champion, everyone will love me. Now, we realize it doesn't work like that. But that is essentially what drove me to become a six-time consecutive world champion. It was that fear of abandonment, that fear of rejection, 
That fear of being worthless is essentially what drove me to become so successful. I didn't allow those setbacks to define me. I didn't allow those setbacks to hold me back. That was when I clarified my vision that I have to become a world champion. Now, at the time, it was anything and everything. Anything I was good at, I thought I could become a world champion at. Now, obviously, my beliefs were a little bit skewed. <laughs> I obviously believed in myself a little bit too much. But I had the conviction to clarify what my vision was, and that was to become a world champion. Now, if you want to become successful in anything, here are the three things you have to do. Number one, you have to be willing to clarify your vision. Number two, you have to surround yourself with a great team of people. People who support you, people who believe in you, people who are there to encourage you, and people that actually believe in you sometimes more than you believe in yourselves. Not the ones that try and drag you down and pull you down and tell you that you can't, that you won't, that you never will. Because I was surrounded by those at Manly. And I refer to those guys as my dream thieves, my life vampires. The guys that would paddle out and growl in my face and harass me in the, in the water and intimidate me. They'd look at me and go, you're a girl, get out of the water. And I'd look back at them and go, what are you doing out here then? They didn't like the fact that I stood up for myself and fought for what I believed in. Now, I believed I had just as much right to be in the water as they did. But what gave me the strength and the conviction and the courage to stand up and fight for them and fight for myself was my clarity of vision. I wanted to be a world champion. Now, you become the sum of the top five people you spend the most amount of time with. Do you spend too much time with life vampires and dream thieves? Do you spend too much time with people that want to suck the life out of you? Do you spend too much time with these people that I refer to as flames? Because if you think about a flame, the more oxygen you give it, the more fuel you deliver to it, the brighter it becomes. So I don't give these dream thieves and life vampires very much oxygen. I deplete them of oxygen. I deplete them of fuel. I actually remove myself from their presence and spend more time with people who are positive, who are uplifting. Because for the three guys that were sitting here telling me to get out of the water, there was another one sitting here saying, actually, I think you're a really good surfer. I believe in you. Yes, you have work to do. Yes, you can make it. These people are my honesty barometers. These people are my dream thieves. Now, it's up to you as to who you want to listen to. And these are the things that you have to do to achieve a goal. The first thing you have to do is write it down. And when I had established that goal of becoming a world champion, I started penning my goals down. I started writing them down. Because science has proven that you are 39% more likely to achieve your goal if you write it down. These are all measures that you have to take to ensure that you are held accountable for achieving it. Then you post it somewhere. Now, as a kid, there was no social media, there was no Facebook, so I used to post it on my bathroom mirror and my wardrobe, and I had all these daily reminders around my room about what my goals were. I had my big goal, which is to be a world champion, and then I had my smaller goal, or the steps that I had to take to achieve that ultimate goal of becoming a world champion. And these are daily reminders. These are reminders, Am, are my actions complementing my goal? Are the actions that I'm taking getting me one step closer to achieving my ultimate dream. And then lastly, I had to proclaim my goals, because you're not actually going to get the best out of yourself until you share what it is that you want with others. And if you share your goals, now you're truly held accountable. Now, these days, you can post it on Facebook, you can post it on Twitter, and you can be held accountable by millions of people you don't even know. It's a little bit daunting. But share it with the people that are going to support you, not the ones that are going to knock you down. So when I posted my goals on my windows and my mirrors, and I shared my goals with my mentors and my friends and my coaches, I realized that I was increasing the likelihood of achieving my goal. But I still had that underlying fear of rejection. I still had that underlying fear of abandonment. And growing up in an environment where I'm surrounded by life thieves and dream vampires, surrounded by people that are telling me, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, you're not talented enough. You're not pretty enough. You're never going to make it. It was frightening. It was intimidating. It was a place where I found myself sometimes cowering in a state of fear and hopelessness. But that's when I had to rely on the people around me. I had the goal 
and I had the conviction to proclaim to the world that I'm going to be not only a one-time world champion, I'm going to be a multiple-time world champion. And the amount of people around me that said, hang on, you haven't even won an event yet, quiet down, pipe down, Gidget, keep it down, I had to rise above that. Because it's our setbacks and our obstacles that provide us with a foundation of resilience. And it's the resilience that's going to enable you to overcome these challenges time and time and time again. When I was a 16-year-old, that's when I decided I'm going to become a world champion surfer. Up until that point, I was a world champion tennis player, hockey player, surfer, cricketer, obviously none of the sports that had money. I wasn't driven by the dollar, I was driven by my passion to succeed. And surfing was the one place that I just truly reverted back to. It's the one place where I just felt so nurtured and connected. It's the one place that I was so passionate about. That's what drew me back to it. So announcing to the world as a 16-year-old I'm going to be a world champion held me entirely accountable. But here's the other part of the, of the plan or the, the model to achieve your goals. You have to understand what your beliefs are behind it. And it's your beliefs that dictate or govern your behaviours, your habits. And then it's your habits that will enable you to achieve your dreams. But my beliefs at the time sometimes sabotage my outcomes. Sometimes habitage, my habits were demonstrating a bit of self-sabotage. So, for example, I'm reading my diaries from 1992. I was 20 years old. I'll let you smart girls do the maths as how old I am now. And when I was 20 years old, I had this dream still of becoming a world champion. I'd been on the Pro Tour for, for two years. And I was constantly complaining about being fat. And see, what you believe, you will always seek proof of. And so I was complaining about my body weight. And then there was actions that I was taking to correct that. I was training really hard. I was surfing two to three times a day. But then after winning a heat, I would reward myself with cheesecake or apple pie. Now, is that action supporting my ultimate goal? No. You know what that action is doing? It's proving what I believe. I'm believing I'm fat, and therefore, I'm actually creating that because I'm constantly seeking proof of what I believe. Now, if you want to know what you believe, have a look at your life. You are all self-fulfilling prophecies, believe it or not. And if you start using the words, I am, which are really powerful because what you put after them shapes your reality, it changes your life. Now, I use those words to enable me to become a history maker and a record breaker. This is the moment I claim my sixth consecutive world title. Now, I must admit, my first six world titles were driven out of fear. I also believe that I had to passionately dislike my competition to beat them. I used to believe that I had to get everybody out of my way. Now, with someone that has a fear of rejection, I'm actually rejecting people first, or I'm giving them a reason to reject me. Does that make sense? I'm actually seeking what I believe. I'm seeking proof of what I believe. But I succeeded doing that. But you know what that success did? It cost me my quality of life, it cost me my happiness, and it cost me a lot of friendships that were never being able to rebuild. It's really important that you understand that the steps you're taking are fulfilling your life in a holistic way, not just achieving your goal, but making sure that when you're on your path to success, that you're not stepping on people, you're actually relying on people because all of us are here because we've stood on the shoulders of others. Every successful person has another successful person who has supported them. To achieve my sixth consecutive world title required a lot of resilience, a lot of discipline, because halfway through the year, I lost my mojo. I fell into a state of depression. I was in a state of hopelessness. And I wasn't willing to acknowledge it because we can all go through life thinking everything's great, everything's fine, I'm okay, but deep down you know it's not. And I had that deep down sense of restlessness and uneasiness. And then one day, one of my friends, a guy called Guy Leach, he's a world Ironman champion, he walked into my house unannounced without a shirt on, which is standard for Leachy. And he actually knocked on my door, walked in, sat himself down, and he said, Hey, Gidge, that was my nickname growing up and he still calls me Gidget. He's like, hey, Gidge, how's it going? And I said, yeah, great. He goes, I don't think so. And now, obviously, Leachy's one of my honesty barometers. And I said, what do you mean, I don't think so? And he said, well, you're really down on yourself. You're really negative. You're not motivated. You're not training. You're not surfing. There's something going on. What's happening? Like, why aren't you, why aren't you surfing? How hard can it be? And all I could say was, thank you. Thank you for bringing to my attention something I'm not willing to bring to my own. Who in your life 
brings the best out in you. Who in your life is that honest with you, has that much respect and compassion for you that they're willing to bring those things to your attention to enable you to get past them and become a bigger, more capable, more confident human being? Do you have anyone in, the, in your life that can do that with you? Because if you do, I suggest you maintain a strong connection with them. And if you don't, I suggest you find someone. Because everyone in our life has somebody that maybe we're not choosing to listen to. I chose to listen to Leachy because my desire to become number one in the world, to become a record breaker, to become a history maker, to get out of my own way and fulfill my dream of becoming a multiple time world champion was way more important than failing. Are you focusing on losing or are you focusing on winning? And when I say, are you focusing on losing, it actually sounds like this. I'm trying not to lose. Whereas if you're using the words, I hope so, I'll try, I think so, I guess so, there's no confidence, there's no conviction, there's no belief in those words. I am, I can, I will, I trust, I believe. These are all words of belief and conviction. These are all the words that will fuel you towards future success. The day I won my sixth consecutive world title was overwhelming because I was actually sitting in the water. I'd gone through months of preparation and planning, and 15 minutes before the final, 15 minutes before I was about to cement myself in the history books, I'm sitting in the water, and this is what the internal dialogue sounds in my head. I'm tired. I'm sick of the ro roles and responsibility of being a world champion. I'm fed up with the expectations of my shoulder. I'm tired of being victimized. I'm tired of the, of the intrusion into my life. I'm just fed up. So what am I doing? I'm talking myself out of success. I'm self-sabotaging my moment, and I'm actually getting in my own way and preventing myself from achieving my goal. And so many of us do this on a day-to-day -day basis. So what did I have to do? The only way you can change your beliefs is to become aware of them. And I had to become aware of the words that I was using in my mind. I'm tired, I'm fed up, I'm a victim, poor me, is really not the foundations to achievement. So I had to become aware of what I was saying and flip it and use words I am in a positive way. I am going to get out of my own way. I am going to trust in my instincts. I am going to trust in my ability. I am good enough. I am going to believe in myself. And I am going to catch this next wave. And I am going to be a six times consecutive world champion. Now, the great thing about our subconscious mind is it cannot differentiate between what's real and what's imagined. So don't underestimate the power of visualization. I visualized every aspect of this victory. I visualized what bikini I'd be wearing. I visualized what hand I'd hold the trophy in. I visualized how the salt would feel on my skin, and I visualized what the champagne would taste like once it's been sprayed in my face. I visualized every component of it because I wanted to manifest it. What you think about expands. So become aware of what you're thinking about. And if it's a reality that you don't like, then start thinking something different but you can't change it until you become aware of it. I'm proud of the fact that I was able to get out of my own way and stop sabotaging my, my beliefs by changing my habits and my behaviours, but I can't do that until I become aware of what my beliefs are. My ultimate goal to become successful was to actually be able to make a positive difference. From humble beginnings growing up in Manly Beach to becoming a multiple-time world champion and leaving a lasting legacy has enabled me to create my own foundation called the Aim for the Stars Foundation. And I'm extremely grateful for the girls at this school today for supporting the foundation and raising money for it today. It provides financial and moral support for young girls to dare to dream, pursue their passion and aspire to achieve. Over the last 13 years, we've invested over $700,000 into young girls and women to invest in their own future and fulfill their own potential. Don't underestimate the impact you can have on someone else's life. When you say you want to lead by example, choose the word positive before it. Choose the word positive example. Leave a lasting legacy. Believe in yourselves. Surround yourself with people that believe in you more than you believe in yourself. And never give up on your dreams because they never give up on you. Ultimately, it's choice, not chance, that determines our reality. If you want to change your current reality, please start making different choices. Thank you.